me sharing my testimony is me taking my power back. It's me healing. I didn't tell nobody till like years after, damn near a decade. And, you know, just dealing with depression and low self-esteem and just, you know, all these low vibrational habits that's literally not even mine. This is something that, you know, sexual assault created within me. This is not for sympathy. This is not for empathy. This is for my healing purposes. And this is for healing purposes of the masses who need to hear my story. What's poppin' Divine Dimes? It's your boy, Eris Lior, and this is The Hill Tricks. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for this video. I know it is a heavier topic, but God has just revealed to me that my breakthrough is in my voice. Our voice is very powerful. The tongue is very powerful. Before we even get into this video, y'all already know, get y'all bath tea. Get your bath tea, get your herbal bath tea, lovely infusion on Etsy.com. The link is in the bio. And the benefits are as follows. Relieves anxiety and depression. It helps fight colds. It obviously, you know, soothes your achy muscle and joints. And it is a spiritual cleanser. It's like a bath for your spirit. That's the best way to explain it. Just like we have showers for our physical body, we have baths for our spiritual body. Hopefully that makes sense. This is just literally my baby. This is my baby. This is my very first product that I ever sold. And I'm really, really happy about it. It's going to get you what it needs. The Luxury Lux Bath. And it's going to give you everything you need. I promise you. So go get yours. The link is in the description down below. So just before I even get into this video, trigger warning, trigger warning throughout this whole fucking video. Okay? So if you are sensitive, if you have been through traumatic experiences and... You know, it's kind of triggering for you to watch videos like this. I really advise for you to click off because I'm really, I'm going to get explicit. I'm really going to tell it all because that's the only way I can tell it is if I tell it all and explicitly. That's the only way that I can, you know, actually get the video out. Trigger warning towards this whole video. Ooh, child, get a drink of water. Drink of water. And it's so interesting because today is literally a cloudy day. But guess what? On a cloudy day, be my sunshine. Sometimes on a clarity day, you got to be your own sunshine, baby, okay? And y'all, this is how you know it's going to be a great video because I had so many technical difficulties yesterday and including today. Like, the devil did not want me to get this video out, but baby, it is getting out today. Just to give you, like, a background story of me and of the story. I used to live with my grandparents. I used to go to church every Sunday, baby. I mean, faithfully. I mean, waking up 7, 8 in the morning to get ready. And um, going to church like every Sunday throughout my childhood, that was my story, baby. Sometimes my grandparents used to go to like a second service. Like, you know, you have a service in the morning and then you may go to a different church to a second service later on in the evening or it'll be at the same place. So they would go to a second service because they were churchgoers. Like, that's what they do. That was their thing, you know. So... Some days I did not want to go to the second service because I'm a kid. Oh, also, remind y'all, I was literally single digit. I was literally, I believe I was like seven, eight, maybe six. I was very, very young. And honestly, I don't fully remember my age. I don't fully remember how old he is. I do know he was at least five, six years older than me. The boy attended church, the same church that I went to, obviously, and I don't want to get into too much detail, but let's just say he was in the church. You know, he did play his role in the church, and, you know, he was known, and that's the best way to put it, baby. He played his role in the church, like everybody else did. So, there was one particular day where our grandparents went to a second service, and they needed somebody to watch me. Because who want to keep going to a second? Who want to? I mean, I love God. Of course, I love God. But as a kid, you don't want you don't want to keep just going to like church. Like you know, you that's not where you at. They had this boy watch me, and and like I said, I don't fully remember every single thing. But I'm gonna tell y'all as much as I remember. There was one time specifically where we were in my room, and I had a computer in my room, and he literally turned on like some porn pretty sure it was straight porn so he turned it on and we was just watching it or whatever i just remember watching it i don't remember like you know doing anything else 
Okay. Whew. Yes, like I said, he did turn on some straight porn. It's so crazy, you gotta clarify that. But yes, he turned on some porn and we was just watching it. I guess he was like explaining to me, you know, like what was going on. I know I keep interrupting, but I'm just gonna get to it after this and I'm just gonna flow through it. But yeah, this this whole story is like a blur and I really forgot about this story for years. I really just put this story, this experience deep down in my freaking brain, like in the subconscious. And I didn't think about it for a long time. Like there was a lot of times where I didn't, like I didn't even remember that I did experience sexual assault because I literally just like put it down in my subconscious for so long. So back to the story. It's also like a dream. Like it just goes from like phase to phase to phase. Okay, so fuck. I just remember we were on the bed and I don't believe he had me in him head or anything of that nature. But I literally just remember me being like over the bed and he like standing up. I guess you kind of say like Doggy style position. I feel like backshot is just like too gutter for this. But yeah. And I remember like him sticking it in. And I remember it hurting a little bit. And like I do remember feeling pain. I was so young that I did not even know about like cum or pre cum. So there was a point where like I literally thought he had like, I thought he had like pee dripples on me. Like it just felt like pee but as well, that's how young i was like i literally did not even know that it was come so i remember just being like did you pee on me like what the fuck like i was literally so young i literally didn't know what was going on after that i just remember feeling like a little bit more pain and then literally after that it is like the rest of that is erased from my mind like i really don't remember what happened i'm pretty sure that's all that happened but like i said i really don't fully remember and he also did spend the night and I remember that night just like chilling watching TV and then y'all know like back in the day like and this was years ago y'all know back in the day when I used to have like the porn on the TV but it was like the soft core porn it was like you know you would just see like titties you know you would just see like brief intervals of sex but you wouldn't see like porn you wouldn't see like the penis going in you wouldn't see <clears throat> that but you just knew that they was having sex you hear her moan and stuff so he turned that on and i remember he was like oh don't tell your grandparents we watching this because you're gonna get in trouble like i'm gonna get in trouble you just really be so young and just so naive and you just really don't know like i'm literally over here thinking like oh if i tell on what he's doing i'm gonna get in trouble and he's not gonna get in trouble but i do remember my aunt doing my grandma's hair in the other room. Okay, I just remember like us watching it and then when my aunt like was about to open the door, he literally changed it to something else. And we was in like the dark, just in front of the TV. It was just really weird, very odd, very awkward. That is pretty much what happened. I don't believe I told anybody my story until I was about like 20, 21-ish. Yeah, I didn't tell nobody till like years after, damn near a decade. And I really do feel like my trauma started to resurface as well because I had, like I said before, I had held that in my subconscious deep down for so long, I didn't even think about it. So when it came up, I'm like, damn, I really was like sexually assaulted. I really did have that experience and I never healed from it. Like as I got older, you know, just dealing with depression and low self-esteem and just, you know, all these low vibrational habits that's literally not even mind this is something that you know sexual assault created within me i just remember college just dealing with all of this trauma like this trauma finally resurfacing and i just remember me being super sad pretty much my trauma affected me later in my life i definitely was like just acting out of my trauma and that's only one of my traumas baby there's more to come it starts to go to therapy and stuff it did kind of work it did kind of help but i still was dealing with some deep shit honestly I had kind of like told on myself, honestly, that's how like the family started to know. And y'all know how just when you tell one person, the word get around, the word get around, word get around. They said they ain't gonna tell nobody, but baby, they tell everybody. There were people in my family that wanted to press charges, but I was just so like scared at the time. And I was just so like, 
no, you know, it was years ago. You know, we don't got to take it that far, et cetera, et cetera. But now that I am older and I understand like how serious sexual assault is and I understand what it can do to you, I honestly do recommend pressing charges because I feel like me pressing charges could possibly save somebody else from experiencing sexual assault. Me not thinking about that back in the day, I'm just trying to be copacetic and you can't always be copacetic about certain things. It just has really been on my heart and on my mind to tell my story, to tell my testimony. And like I said, this is only one of the stories. I still have more to come. I definitely have a lot more to come. Whatever else God puts on my heart and mind to tell y'all, I will tell y'all. Me sharing my testimony is me taking my power back. It's me healing, honestly. Like, talking is therapy. Therapy is talking. So me talking to y'all, me talking to myself, me talking to God. Throughout this whole process, it's just very, very healing. And I do feel lighter. I feel very much so lighter. This is not for sympathy. This is not for empathy. This is for my healing purposes. And this is for healing purposes of the masses who need to hear my story. Oh my goodness, didn't tell how also my trauma affected me. Whew, I did forget that. Okay, so since I was exposed to sexual assault at a very young age and to porn at a young age, it really took a toll on me and it really made me a lot more lustful and promiscuous at a young age than a kid would normally be. So at a young age, I was watching porn. I don't, I'm pretty sure like I didn't watch it like after the sexual assault happened, but years later, I believe maybe in like my preteens or maybe even a little bit younger than that, preteens, teen, young teens, I was definitely heavily watching porn, heavily masturbating, and I was really just very lustful, very sexual. Like, there was a point in time on kick where I literally used to, like, I was sending nudes back and forth to people, to dudes, and it was just like, I'm just too young for that. I feel like it's more normal in this day and age because, like, just how kids nowadays, they they don't have, like, kid music. They just got the gutter music that we listen to, so... You know, just, just music being over-sexualized and kids not having their genre of music is more normalized, which it shouldn't be. Very lustful, very promiscuous at a very, very young age. And it just really just led up until like now, honestly. And honestly, I still have been battling with, you know, my porn and masturbation. And it's just something that I know has really, you know, took a negative toll on me because it's just a time waster. It's just feeding the flesh. And it is not of God. You feel me? Like, when you really think about it, like, watching porn, porn is just really not normal. Like, it's just not. It's not real sex. It's just like social media. Social media is not real life. People think it's real life. Actually, really, really weird when you really think about it because people back in the day, they didn't have social media. They didn't have access to technology. So the only way to do that was to literally sit there in front like and watch somebody have sex. So it's actually really, really weird when you think about it. And it's definitely a trauma response that I have been really battling for the longest. Like I have just really been battling with it for the longest. And I'm just, no, I know that this is going to help break me free, but just really, really bad. Just watching like all type of different kinds of porn watching it for long amounts of time and just clicking on different videos and literally just feeding that lust within me. You know, as I get older, it's like, okay, I really don't want to do this no more. Like I want to have like real sex, but I'm just so used to porn and masturbating. It's just, it's my comfort zone as well. Because that's what I started doing at a young age. So it just manifests and it just grows and it grows even bigger, bigger, bigger. And when you think about it, it's also like alcoholism. And it's like, you know, smoking and like uh, gambling. It's like an addiction that you can never fulfill. Because just like gambling with money, money is infinite. There will never be enough money to fulfill a person. 
with like alcoholism and drinking, your tolerance level goes up. So just like two, three shots may get you there and, and get you drunk and get you feeling how you need to feel. You eventually going to need six. You're going to have to double your doses. Like Nikki said, you're going to have to double your doses because your tolerance is going to grow and it's going to get higher and higher. And it's not going to be enough. Three drinks is not going to be enough. You're literally going to have to just do, you're going to have to like literally feed that spirit, that flesh. Oh my gosh, I thought I would never literally talk about this, but it just feels good to talk about it because I know I'm not the only one who deals with porn addiction, masturbation addiction. I know that they say the numbers has like risen in like how many people masturbate and watch porn, but it's like, how do you really know that? But I would just say it makes a lot of sense because OnlyFans, music, the TV shows, the movies, sex is everywhere. Sex is literally everywhere. So it makes sense. And I know that if me speaking my testimony can help me relieve me of my addiction, it can help relieve others of their addiction as well. I really, really hope y'all enjoyed this video. I really, really hope that y'all learned something. I really hope y'all gained some knowledge and wisdom from this video. And I hope you all continue to, if you're able to withstand it, I hope you are able to continue to tune into my testimony journey. I love y'all. So keep the vibration high on this high vibration day as you should, period.